Hey, so today we're going to be tattooing this here. It's really important that when tattooing portraits, you learn and practice each element individually first. It helps you get familiar with the different shapes and effects. Then we'll learn how to bring it all together. But first, let's have a look at the design and break it down so we can familiarize ourselves with what's going where, what needles we're going to be using, what methods of shading that are going to be best suited for each area of the tattoo. Okay, so before we start the tattoo, the first thing I want to do is just look at the reference and I want you to start learning to break down images before you do the tattoo just by looking at the reference. So if this is the reference that we're using to tattoo or it, it'll be a photograph, a drawing of a person, obviously this this exercise we're just doing the ear. But start getting into your head the methods that's going to be involved. So straight away looking at this we can see that there's a nice bold edge down this bottom. So get it into your head. We're going to be doing it with just a 15 10 gauge curved magnum. So because I know that instantly I'll be thinking right so this area I'd be having the needle on its side and creating the edge with the edge of the needle. Then I'd be working away from that so I'm not wiping my stencil and get this bottom area in. I'd then be roughly sketching in little shapes so we can see that there's a nice solid edge here so I'd put that in again thinking well what method am I going to be using. Well, I know that my needle choice is the 15 curved mag, so in my head I'd be saying, right, that bit, I'm going to use it on its side and work away. Same with all the bold lines. We can see straight away looking that there's this dark edge. There's also this area inside the ear, near the tragus. We've got this nice fold here and up, up here. So if we add all the basic shapes in, so this bottom area, this bit, this line here, this U shape, these areas, this top bit and the top of the ear, if everything else were wiped away, I think we'd get a pretty good result just by using them simple guidelines. So the idea is, when you're looking at the reference, start thinking what am I going to be doing and I'm almost dry run it in your head as you're looking thinking right I'd use this technique here I'd block that area in I'd shade away I can see this bit so just start familiarizing yourself just by looking at the reference so have a good look at the reference go through what I've just said and then get everything set up and we'll do the tattoo so now let's get ready to do the tattoo. As always with every lesson, the stencil and reference are attached to lessons so you can download those and use them to follow along with the lesson. Okay, so we've got everything set up. As you can see, I'm using gray wash, solid black, dark, medium, light. You can either mix your own up or use pre-mixed, either or is fine. For today's tattoo, the only needle that I'm going to be using is the 15. Uh, it's a bug pin 10 gauge curved 15 mag. So let's uh, crack on with the design. So as always, I'm starting off near the bottom. And you want to try and get areas in to block in areas first. So, as we've already said, it'd be a good idea to get this bottom lobe shaping because it's almost like a line. And then we can work off that and put the background in and then gradually work up the design. So, it's virtually black line across there. So I'm gonna go in.
block that shaping. Okay, from there, I'll start shading off. This bottom area is quite dark. So I've just blocked that bottom bit in, as you can see. I'm not overly fussed about having it perfectly neat straight away. I'm just blocking in the shapes. So and then I'm going to move to my lighter one and start putting just the areas that have got to be a little bit darker. And again, the reason why we're doing this is we don't want to rub the stencil off. So if we block in the rough shapes first, we don't have to worry about wiping them because we've got a basic shape there and it's not going to be going anywhere. So now I want to wipe this. I can see I've got that rough shape just very lightly in there so I don't have to worry about wiping that area off now. So I'm going to start getting this shading area to look something more alike. So next section that I want to put in, if we can see the the low above the low where it's um, I don't know what it's called that bit uh, next to Tragus, I'm going to block that area in. It's dark, so I'm going to use the dark part just to block in the shape. Okay, and then we can see this little section here, so before I wipe it, I don't want to lose that. So I'm just going to put a small rough guide, just so I know where that bit's got to be. I can also see I've left a section here for highlight. So I've blocked in my basic shapes, so I can give that a wipe now. 
and I don't have to worry that it's going to disappear. So now, I'm going to start making this bottom area look more like it should before we move on. So we can see that there's darker areas down at the bottom. back into the lights. Remember not to rush. You've got to take your time and build up gradually. If you just shove your needle into somebody to try and push the ink in really fast, it causes a lot of trauma to the skin. So you can't build up in layers because you're going to have damaged the skin before you get to the amount of layers that you need. So just take your time nice and slow, nice and soft, not overworking it. So we can see all this area is just nice and light so I'm just using brush technique to gradually build up that area. So what I'm going to do now is just put this line in and then also the line coming up here and this line just to block in that area. And again, I'm not swapping to a lining needle because I don't want it to be a solid line. I just want it to be a dark edge. So I'm just going to block in this little area of background that we can see on design is really dark and 
putting in your darkest areas always helps with determining contrast between different sections of tattoo because you can always look at it and reference it back to the darkest or lightest part of an image. for medium. I've not washed off this time. I've just gone straight in. I'm going to darken this little section up here and then start getting this crease in. You can see it's slightly darker there. we can see it's starting to come together now. Now this centre bit we can see it's a lot darker here and down this bottom edge and then it almost like fades out, so I'll put the darkest area in. And you can see it fades off, so using whip shade in here to whip away from it. So it has that nice gradual blend. Yeah. Now this area is shaded, but also this area is top and bottom of the line. That line needs to be a bit more prominent. Obviously we only sketched it in, so I'm just going to use Edge at Mag just to make it a bit bolder, like that. And then what I'm going to do is before I start shading these, so I don't lose any of the information, I'm just going to sketch in this dark area. And then it doesn't matter where we wipe from there down, I've got all the basics in. So it doesn't matter how much I wipe. So it's dark up here. So I'm just going to sketch the key parts of the information in. You can see I'm changing angle of the magnum to follow the line as I'm bending. And it's not got a solid edge at the bottom, it's a lot softer. So rather than using it to create a line, I'm just using Edge at Mag to create an edge rather than a line.
So now I've actually lost all my stencil here, but it doesn't really matter because I've got all the key shapes already in. So all I've got to do now is look at the reference and start adding all the different shades and tones to create the effect that I'm wanting. If it's darker on design, do that a little bit darker. If it's lighter, do it lighter. So as you can see, all we're doing is gradually working his way through. I'll just give it a good clean so you can see. Once we've got all the basic shape in, so we'll quickly just work his way up to the top, getting it to that sort of that sort of level, and then we can start refining everything and making it look more like it should. So we can see this shading area starts to come away there. So I'm just going to block that in. You can see this line's faint, but then it gets a bit bolder. So I'll put it in. This top section, we've got a nice. Darker edge all the way gets a bit lighter, so lessen it up a little bit. There's a little fold here at the top of here, so we're just going to block that shape in. And because we're doing it section by section, there's this shape here in shading. that that 
bit's darker. And that final area is just the top of the ear that we need to get that shape in. And it's a nice solid line on this one. So we'll just follow it. Not too much, not too bold to start with. So you can see we've blocked in all that shape. So now it's time to start crisping it all up, making it look like it should. Okay, so we're starting to build on the basics now. So we can see this in a bit. Needs to be a little bit darker. Not a problem, we'll just go in, darken it up. Just going to go into these darker areas and just neaten them up a little bit. making the darks nice and dark and the lights nice and light think back to previous lessons it's going to help the tattoo pop and also stand the test of time so sometimes when you're doing your tattoo you might think the contrast is slightly too much and that's fine because when the tattoo heals and it mellows out a little bit it'll even itself out. So we've got all basic shaping, but there's too much just empty space. So we need to start going in and build off the lighter areas. So I'm just gonna start at the bottom and gradually work my way through, doing all the lighter shading areas and just all finishing touches. And then we're gonna extend as background and put us a little bit of uh, sideburns in.
So you can see all I'm doing is just adding to it, smoothing areas out. Constantly cross-referencing, looking at what I'm doing, looking at the design, the reference, making sure that I'm not losing track, I've not forgot what I'm supposed to be doing. Constantly going from one to next. So you can see straight away that by increasing the contrast slightly it makes a huge difference to how the tattoo looks. So we can s still see that this little area needs a a bit more work, we need to emphasize some key points and lines. So we're just gonna keep working it. And because we've only been just touching the skin or the mat, we've not been doing packing, we've just lightly been brushing or whipping, it allows us to build the design up in layers and this really helps because doing it gradually like this, you're not being too uh, traumatic to the skin, you're building it up nice and slow. But also because you're building it up in layers, if you make a little error, you can just correct it as you go along. So it's a lot more forgiving than just packing each area as you go. Building it up nice and slow is definitely a key point to doing realism pieces. Just going and softening edges of this top bit, also carrying the shading along because this is slightly shadowed. see when I wipe it away all that work and not a lot of ink's actually gone in I'm not forcing it in I'm just very lightly touching and gradually building it up and you using this method not only is it less traumatic to the skin it's also a lot more comfortable for your customer you can go for hours and hours before they reach that point where they just can't continue because you're not smashing the, the body to bits you're taking it nice and slow gradually building it up it's a lot more comfortable 
and a lot less painful. So I'm just putting light areas in now. We don't want too much just empty. So I'm just ever so lightly working the areas that I need to. Nice and slow, no rush. So now I'm going to go into darks, add these little bits just to re replicate where the hair would be. Obviously we're, we're doing the year today so this bit doesn't have to be uh, anything fancy, it's just to finish the image a little bit more. Remember as well is a really good tip, I've mentioned it multiple times, just stop what you're doing and come away from your image and just look at it from a distance. Um, your eyes almost become too familiar with the image, you're constantly staring at something and it's, it's almost like your mind can start playing tricks on you. So I'm just going to extend this shading, soften it all up a little bit. Get a nice light wash. And just lightly touching, building it up, layering it up. Just adding a bit of a drop shadow behind here. Just helps the image pop a little bit more. So come away, have a look. Is there any bits that need adjusting? Yep. Want that to be a bit bolder. Also, this shadow here needs to be a bit bolder. This line. I 
I also, I still think this area down here needs a little bit more. It's not quite, it's a bit too light. So just with a nice light wash, just give it another layer. I think that's getting a little bit more like it now. I'm also just going to add a little bit coming off this top. So you can see it's almost like a, a pencil charcoal drawing. There's no solid lines. And you're not wanting to create lines when doing realism. You're wanting to create an edge. And they just look a little bit softer and more realistic. So I can just add a bit more shadows up to create that. Highlight around that side. I think this area and this area just need to be a little darker to create that depth. This bit needs to be lighter, so to help that pop, just create that drop shadow a little bit deeper. And that should help look like it's sunk in the ear a little bit more. So we're just about there for this lesson. I'm just going to increase contrast in odd little areas. Again, like I've already said, it just helps the tattoo stand the test of time and helps it pop off the skin a little bit more. which it's hard to show you to replicate on this fake skin, but I'm sure you all get the idea. So I'll give it a good clean. That's the basics of doing an ear. So we're gonna do a few more different ones, different shapes, sizes, nobody's ears are the same. Just to, like I've already said, get you familiar with different shapes, different techniques that you're gonna be using. And then when it all comes together, So if your ear looks anything like that, you go in the right direction. Well done everybody. Now as always, don't expect perfection first time round. We're looking for improvement. And you've got these lessons forever. That's the beauty of this course. You can come back to this exact lesson 50 times if you wanted. Learn, make, repeat. I really hope that you enjoyed the follow along. And don't forget to do them the two most important things, post your finished piece into the group. Also, upload your post onto your own page to show your own following what you can do. 
trust me, people that enjoy art in any form always love to see something broken down like we've done today. On that note, I'll see you all in the next lesson. Have a good one. Cheers.